Right, right, let's start at the beginning then. You signed as a youth player and you signed pro in 1965. First of all, was it always going to be football for you and was it always going to be LFC? Yeah, I mean, I, I was fortunate I played like Lancashire schoolboys, played for England schoolboys. So I could have gone more or less anywhere in the country, but I was a big Reds fan. Um, and they came along, to be fair. Uh, Bob, um, Bill Shatney came to the house. Um, and my dad, who was a professional footballer, he played in the Welsh League until he was... He was 55, strange enough, he played a long time. Uh, but Shanks came, and then we just signed up, and uh, I joined as a kid. I'd been going like to Liverpool, I was on a Tuesday and Thursday nights, that's what they did with the, the school kids then. You, you, you get a chance to mix with some of the, the professionals and different things. So, yeah, it was just great to go there. Um, I always remember the first day I walked into Liverpool as, a, as an apprentice on my massive wage of eight pound a week. Um, <laughs> And I walked in the door with a guy called Kevin Marsh, and Kevin was from Kirby. And he walked in, and we had a guy called Albert Shelley, and um, we used to look after the boots and all the players' bits and pieces. And he was, a, he was cynical, to be fair. We walked in, and as we walked in, he pointed at me and said, you and you, and Kevin was like six foot. He said, Kevin, policeman. He looked at me and he went, jockey. And, <laughs> and I said, what's all that about? He said, That'll be your next job, he said, because you're not going to make it here. <laughs> Talk about building you up with hope. But he was on your case straight away. And that's, they did it, I think, for the, to just make sure you didn't become big headed. They just kept you at a good level. So that was a nice welcome into to Liverpool Football Club, yeah. Now, you did make it to a certain extent. You had 11 appearances. I believe a very good appearance against George Best. Is that correct? Yeah, I played, I mean, unfortunately, I, only, I played more or less 15 with a few cup ties, but. Um, I played 350 reserve games, but that's another thing. <laughs> Unfortunately, I just couldn't get in because they were winning everything, you know, year after year. Uh, one year, they actually won, I think, two trophies, won the league by, by um, Easter, and they'd only used 14 players. Um, so trying to get in that team was, was crazy. And, and I'm talking about the, t the team for 10 years. I, I just I got the odd game. Um, and to be fair, I played against George, um, Man United. And we beat them 3-1 at Anfield. And yes. he came up and he said, he said, well done, lad. Thanks for not trying to kick me. I said, I couldn't get anywhere fucking near, George. Sorry. But, <laughs> <laughs> excuse my language, but that's... <laughs> and he was a big guy. So, and, and then I went. I had, a, I had a chance to go to America. I got married on a Thursday. I got married in the wigwam. To be fair, but it's a little bit of a cathedral. Yeah, yeah. My wife's a, a Catholic. I'm a Protestant. Um, and and the, the priest at the time, like he was part of the family. And he got up and he said, I'd like to welcome the Evanses who are playing away today. <laughs> <laughs> and we got married on the Thursday. Uh, we jumped on the plane. We went to Philadelphia. Um, and I had a three-month loan there. Um, played on the Saturday. And then, as I say, and we actually won the American Championship, if you like, the NASL. Oh. I, and you don't get, a, you don't get a, a medal. You get a ring. And, but it's about six foot on your fingers. It's massive. <laughs> um, but that's the only trophy I can say like, of all these guys who've won everything that not other ones got, so I've, I've, that's my only sort of claim to fame, if you like. Well, obviously you made up for it, but uh, your career was cut short by Bob Paisley when he, he turned around and said to you, I, I want you to go into the training side of it. You know, what was that like as a 26-year-old? And for, you, <laughs> for yourself, how did you deal with that? Well, when he, to be fair, when he comes and said that, we, we'd, look, we'd like you to be a, you'd like you to be in coach, we, you know, you've been doing really well. But if you're 26, there's a message there somewhere, isn't it? That, that you're not, you're not going to get a game, or you're not going to play in the first team much. Um, and I turned it down two or three times. I, I wanted just to play. Obviously, playing is the best thing in football. Um, but eventually, I took the job. And, okay, probably the best part of my career. I mean, I went through the reserves for nearly 10 years. Um, and we won it maybe eight or nine times. And then I sort of went, I, I became the, the physio. Didn't have a clue, like, not, not qualified. I was just good at throwing the sponge at people and saying, get up, there's nothing wrong with you. It's, which you wouldn't get away with in the modern day game. Um, and then I was like a coach. Um, and then I became assistant manager with Graham Sooners. And, and then um, I got the, obviously the job as manager. And to be fair, I think we did okay. Um, the football we played was like good to watch, but we didn't, didn't win enough um, for Liverpool Football Club. That's, uh, that's part of the game. And, uh, even like with Jäger, Jäger now, um, as much as I love the way he plays and I love the way that the, the club's going forward, somewhere down the line he's got, got to win something, I think, that that'll, and that'll give him a, the confidence to go even further. We ended up winning the League Cup, um, 
we all know about the white suits and uh, you know, obviously Man United things. Uh, the staff never wore them. The players picked them, not me. Um, <laughs> but it was all about a player's pool them days. Um, but my career as a manager, I enjoyed it. It was good. Um, but once uh, Gerard Julia came um, and they decided that we're going to have joint managers, um, that just doesn't work in any profession, whether, whether any job you've got. Somewhere down the line, there's got to be a final person who makes the decision. Um, and when you've got two guys, I, I should have been stronger at the time. I should have, I, I'd have said, like, yeah, either you sack me, or at the end of the day, they did it for the right reasons, they said. The game's getting very European. Maybe it'll give us a, a, a heads up, being ahead of the game, if you like. But they could have called him director of football. They could have called it, you know, what you like at the end of the day. It, and I called him a few things, but let's not go down that road. <laughs> um, it just wasn't, just didn't work. You know, they, he picked, want to pick one team, I want to pick another. It's like you go to the game with your mates. You all have different opinions. Um, and I decided to walk. Um, maybe, maybe basically because I'm a Liverpool fan. I didn't think it was working. It was starting to drag not only myself down, but the players. Um, and I walked away. But that's, that's the sad part. But that, that's where my career was, unfortunately. Now, you were the last of the boot room boys, and what was made of the boot room. Can you describe the actual boot room for us and what your first thing when you walked in that room, what was the first thing that you like put in place? <laughs> um, well, the boot room was, was, a, was obviously a little poxy room, basically in the corner over there, but the boots obviously hung up and, some, and the kit was in the little, little baskets and different things. So, but it was a place where we entertained all the other teams after the, after the, the, the game. So no matter who it was, we'd invite them in, win, lose or draw, come and have a drink before you go on the bus and we talk about the game, what was there. Um, and I went in the boot room, obviously, and you're talking about, Shankly wasn't in there, but um, Bob Pace used to be in there, <coughs> Joe Fagan, Ronnie Moran, Tom Saunders and myself. And for some reason, they let me put up Playboy calendars. <laughs> and don't ask me why they let me do that, I haven't got a bloody clue. But Playboy and Penthouse, I put them on there just to brighten the place up. And there was always two cases of lager, two cases of Guinness, a bottle of whiskey and a bottle of wine. That was our after the game event, if you like, with, with the opposition. Um, but the boot room wasn't about the size of the place, or what it was, it was about the people. And when you talk about Shankly, Paisley, Fagan, Ronnie Moran, Tom Saunders, if you can't learn off people like that, and at the age of 26, they said to me, look, if you've got something to say about the first team, you run your first team like it's your own team, and we'll only, we'll only tell you to do things if we're, we're putting one of our players, he needs to be, he's injured, he needs a bit of training to go on your teams. So let me run it like my team, and successfully, fortunately. And when you, when you come with the first team, if you've got something to say, say it, because you might just pick up one little thing that makes a difference, and we might miss. And if, you, if you're wrong, we'll tell you. So they were like, they, they were fantastic with me in that, that case, that they, they let me sort of work my way into being coach and of course I went on then from the coach to be assistant manager with Graham Sooners. Great guy to be fair. Probably the most passionate manager we've probably ever had in many ways, Graham. Not saying he always got it right in the transfer market because he liked a physical player. He really yeah, he liked and he bought physical players. But what he forgot, Graham was physical. He could like whack people all the time. But Graham could play as well. He was a, a brilliant player. So the balance of the two, um and when he bought like you know, one or two of the players he brought in weren't, they were just physical guys. We just lost a little bit then. Um, and when Graham walks, I got, ended up getting the job. And when you get the job as a manager, there's only one thing that's going to come eventually. And it's the end, isn't it? It's the sack of you, like, oh, walk away. And, and that's what I did eventually. But um, I, I haven't, I have, I'd love to have been a player more, but to have like 35, 40 years, 40 major trophies, because of me, by the way, because I wasn't the best player, I wasn't the best manager, I wasn't the best, whatever, but I was part of it all. Um, one thing I was, though, I was the best mascot they ever had. That's what <laughs> she, uh, I, I, to this day. And uh, I had a great time. Um, what else can you say about it? I still love the club. Uh, obviously, I was a bit, when I left, I was a bit angry and unhappy. But I went back, and to be fair, nowadays we, we get invited all the time to go back and do match day stuff. And they look after the ex players brilliant and fair. So um, it's nice to be there, nice to be enjoy 
the whole thing again. Now, let's go back to when you did take charge. And obviously in our first season, you did, you did win the, the League Cup as, as a manager. What was it like for you yourself to win that, that, that medal as a manager instead of being a player? Well, I think it's great to win anything, um, whether you're a player or a manager at the end of the day. You, you're happy for your lads with a bunch of players. Um, and no criticism of, of Jürgen at the end of the day. When it comes to cup ties, whether it be League Cup or FA Cup, I think they should take a little bit more notice of it. I don't quite like the idea that they prioritise Champions League or, or just the Premier League. If you win the FA Cup, that's, that's been a massive trophy over the years. So, um, but when you win the first trophy, you think that's it, we're great. Then we'll go on to the next one. Then you, okay, that didn't quite happen with me, but that's, that's your thoughts. And, and the only advantage I think that City have got over us in this, this sort of running now is they've won it once and they've got that little bit of experience on it. Um, doesn't mean they're going to win it this time, but it just gives them that little edge. Um, and I do think that we're obviously we've got a great chance of, of winning it. Hopefully before I end up in the wooden box, but and I'd like to see it win it sometime. <laughs> we will. We will. I'm sure, I'm sure that, Roy. Now, let's, let's talk about transfers, obviously, when, when you became manager. And you were the first, well, the same first person. You broke... British transfer record when signing Stan Collymore. Was that a, f a first when you came in that, that second, well, the second season? Was that a sign of intention of you really want to push it and get that league title for us? Yeah, of course. I mean, I, when, you've, when you've been at Liverpool look, throughout the years and all the things that you've won with different teams, um, you try to improve your team. And to be fair, I, I mean, I, I paid 8.5 million for Stan Collymore. And he came, to be fair, um, and to be fair, pace, power, good player. The only problem was I couldn't get Stan to move. He lived in, in the Midlands. Trying to get him to, to, he lived in Dudley in a place called Dudley. To try and get him to move up to Liverpool was ridiculous. And, and the amount of time that he'd be late for training and different things. And players react to that. So like you start finding him and then you start telling him off or you whatever. So the rest of the players then say, hang on, where is he today? Even the press boys used to say, is Stan here? Could he, could he make it today? It became difficult to manage in the end of the day. And we made a decision that, okay, doesn't matter how good a play, and no one's bigger than a football club, basically. And obviously, we sold him on. And, but he, wanted, he, was a, he, was a, he never fulfilled his potential, Stan, I would say that. And that's not a criticism, that's just um, what I think. Because even when he moved on, I think he went to Seville or back to Villa or something. Loads of places. He didn't actually fulfill it from there. Now, as well, on the back of that, you were in charge of that Spice Boys era. Uh, do you think that was a really unfair tag? And did it actually affect the lads, like the likes of Fowler, McManaman, and Jamie Redknapp? Did it, did, it, did it bother them? Did it bother you? No, it's not, it's not something you like. It depends how it's, it's, it's meant, isn't it? Um, I'm a great believer in look, people with personalities. And I never try to stop anybody's personality. Yes, alongside that, you've got to have a little bit of discipline. You've got to make sure that everything's done in the right way. I had a bunch of lads who loved playing football, had a bit of fun. In them days, we could have a bit more fun maybe than the, the guys of today. No social media. Um, we could go out for a few pints after the game, by the way. But, <laughs> Not um, Yeah. But so, the, the bunch of lads I had, uh, they played great football. Um, the only thing that was wrong, we didn't win enough. Um, unfortunately, the, the guy down the road won a little bit more than us. Uh, but, as I say, I wouldn't change them. The only thing I would change, I'd love to have won more. Now, as well, Joe, that's my suppose here, you were given the tag of being Mr. Nice Guy. Did, again, did, did that bother you? And I'm sure you could give up the old bargain. I like anything else again. It's, it's, it's got you nothing to be nice. I, I, I like to talk to me players sensibly. But again, when needed, you could sometimes. I mean, everyone responds mostly in any sort of jobs, again, whether it be football or whatever, any business. I, everyone responds to, to a pat on the back. A little bit of credit and well done, you've done a really good job. And that gives you the, on the given day, when they haven't played or they haven't done their best, to kick them up the backside, basically. And yeah, I could do that. And, but I, the, the biggest thing is, is you've got to talk to them and you've got to try and get the best out of, out of players. And that, that goes to any business, really. You're there, if you're a manager or whatever it is, you're there to get the best out of the people that work for you. And you also, you signed the likes of Caroline Schreeder, uh, Reed even, uh, Patrick Berger, Paul Ince. Who for you was, you'd say, your, your best signing you made while in charge? I thought Patrick Berger made a, a big difference. And, and actually, got a lot, of, a lot of women coming back to watch football, that's for sure. Because <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't that looking guy, Patrick. Um, 
No, but Patrick brought a little bit different. He was like, he, obviously, a midfield player, but could break into that forward thing, Robbie Fowler you know, up at the front and Mac Manaman. Yeah, we were, we were a decent attacking team. Um, I mean, I bought a few decent lads. I bought a few bad ones at the end of the day. <laughs> and, and you're going to ask me who's the worst. Oh, that was the next one, yeah. <laughs> and um, I would have to say it would be Sean Dundee. Um, <laughs> and the daft thing Surprise. was... The daft thing was... Uh, uh, and you, you shouldn't... I shouldn't even tell you this, really. Carl Heinz really, uh, uh, was a great player and a great lad. And he said, there's this lad in Germany. He's, he looks the part. He's really doing well. And to be fair, I said, I haven't seen him. So he said, I'll show you a video. So he went and got me a video, and I watched the video. And to be fair, on the video, he played really well. Now, he, he was never going to give me a bad video, was he? <laughs> and I had a bad day. So I, the message was there somewhere. We didn't go and see him. We bought him. And it was just a waste of space. Unfortunately, the guy's attitude was crap. But the blame goes to me. It was my, it was my decision to, to bring him there. And one thing you, you do, then, you have to go and look at, at the players. I mean... It's totally different now. It's all about how many kicks did he get, how many, where did he run, all these sports scientists have, all, all things about how you sign players. In them days, as a manager, you, if you want to sign somebody, you have to go and look. Was there anybody that you got close to signing or anybody that you really want to sign or anyone just, just got away from you? Um, yeah, a couple of lads. Um, i can never forget to remember the names. Um, lad who played for Tottenham. Teddy Sheringham. Teddy Sheringham. Um, he was close to coming, uh, unfortunately, but it just didn't happen. Didn't happen with the obviously the deal between the two clubs, and um, an Italian lad actually. Or, or, no, he keeps no, he's a South American guy. I still can't think of his name. Either. Go on, tell us. I know, but I'm sorry, I was going to wait for you. <laughs> Give us a clue. Um, <laughs> a B. What's his name? I can't think. Of, I can't think of his name. I go. He couldn't have been that good. You didn't sign him. No, he was actually. But, uh, of course, <laughs> it just didn't happen. <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't Ronaldo, was it? No. <laughs> no. Um, Who? No. Um, Batistuta. Ba Gabriel Batistuta. Ga Gabriel Batistuta, yeah. Jesus. That, that, that would have won you a few titles, I think. <laughs> Might have helped, yeah, but to be fair, the money was a, a different thing them days. Yeah. Hey, let, let's talk about why you were in charge some of, some of the games you took part in. Obviously, you mentioned that dreaded FA Cup final. Um, and you took part, of course, in... That legendary now 4-3 game with Kevin Keegan. How was it being a manager on the sideline? Was it, was it just a case of watching what happened or, or interfere? Well, there was two 4-3 games. To be fair, the second, the, one, the yeah, second yeah. one was just basically a nothing game. One of them, um, we should have beaten 4-0. Um, and the lads got a, a rollicking after that game because that, for me, we had too many goals in. The first one was one of them games where the lads go out there and they play to the best of their ability. Um, obviously, you, you sat on the, on the bench, but you played no part in it. It was just a massive end-to-end -end football. Everybody trying to win the game, um, and, and you have obviously a little bit of a say at our time. Um, but just a, a great game to watch. Um, and obviously, if you win, that makes it obviously even better. But I mean, but Kevin, he was like thinking, "Oh, this is the worst game in the world because we didn't get there." But they were great games. Um, but as I say, that was the one where. You don't really take a part as a manager because the lads have just, they were that keen to win it. Um, they went out and played. And that's what, you know, sometimes players are about. I mean, sometimes with that as a manager, you can have too many tactics, you can have too many. Sometimes you have to say, go out there and, and, and play. Go out and win the game. My, my last word to my players always was, go out and enjoy yourselves. It's a game of football. And to be fair, I, I still believe that's, that's the right way to go out, to go out there with confidence, go out there thinking you can win it, be positive. Um, if you have all those things, plus the ability, of course, then you've got a good chance. And to finish off with, Roy, what would you say for you is the best moment in your career, whether playing or during your manager stage? I think always playing. My, my first game um, in the first team, I think that's, again, we ended up winning 2-1 or something it was. But just to actually play in the first team, obviously in front of like 45,000, 50,000 people, um, I played with the schoolboys at Wembley against Germany, um, and there was 96,000 at Wembley, and then we and we beat them 2-1. Then we went up to Middlesbrough and played them again, and we drew 1-1, and we we one nil down with five minutes to go, and we got a penalty, and I took the penalties. I sent the goalkeeper the wrong way. He got up and picked up the ball. 
I, I, I stubbed it, and they went bump, bump, but didn't even, <laughs> didn't even reach the line. <laughs> so we ended up drawing it. I'm not, we actually win one, two, one, because we got another penalty a minute later. And I went to take it, and the big centre half said, get out of the way, and he smashed it in the thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, fantastic talk, talking to you there, Roy, some fantastic memories. Ladies and gents, please put your hands together for Roy Evans. Thank you. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you, Roy.